Hello everyone, today we are going over helpful tips for anime dimensions. This video will be a guide from early game to late game. Let's start out with some tips for early game. My first tip for early game players will be to save gems. Seriously guys, do not waste your gems on costumes yet. Save for a 1600 or 2500 gem character. These are much better than ones you'll get from early level dungeons and will help you progress a lot further. My second tip can go pretty much hand in hand with the previous tip. Please use the character testing option, I don't see enough players using this when deciding which character to get. So please just use it when deciding which character you want to use. Now, whenever you're early game, use whatever you feel most comfortable using, but please still save for 1600-2500 gem characters. My third tip, drumroll please, have fun with the game. Trust me, if you're an early game player, have fun with this game. Don't worry much about anything, just enjoy it while you can. Now my fourth tip, ignore substats for now, a card might give you 5% more attack. However, I can guarantee you, a level 21 card is going to be better than that level 10 card. No matter what stats are on it, if it is a higher level, then use it. Now my fifth tip might just be the biggest tip I can possibly offer to you all. Please do not beg for carries. Trust me, it is very rare that someone will carry you, especially when you beg. This game is also pretty easy, so you could spend 30 minutes looking for carries, or you could spend 30 minutes grinding and slowly improving at the game. Getting carried won't improve you. My sixth tip for early game players, do not bother with raids yet. They aren't worth doing until you're a mid-game player, or I'd say around level 60 to 70-ish. At a low level, you might get a max of 3 or 4 rewards, which is only like 12 tokens if you're lucky. Spend those 8 minutes getting stronger cards and progressing into higher dungeons first. I would still recommend to do boss rushes, because these will scale with your level, which means if you have decent cards to your level, you'll get some good rewards out of them. My seventh tip is to buy a pet. Once you obtain a pet for the cheap price of 150 gems, equip it and you will see a bar right under your health. Doing damage will charge this bar, and once it is full, your pet will do an attack. My eighth tip is a very important one for players of all levels. Use the AFK feature. In this, you will get a lot of free gold on either gems or raid tokens. Let's just consider an overnight AFK is 12 hours. Without VIP, you get 2 raid tokens every 5 minutes. Multiply this by 12 for 60 minutes, and it totals to about 24 an hour. 24 raid tokens an hour for 12 hours is 288 raid tokens, which will help a lot later. Especially if you get VIP, because that number is doubled to 576 a night if you feel like letting your PC run overnight. My ninth and final tip for early game players, use the codes. Trust me, they will speed up your grind so much. The codes will give boosts such as 2x gold, 2x XP, and an extra drop per dungeon. Plus they will give you free gems, and if I remember correctly, a few raid tokens, which help a lot later. Oh, wait, I do have one more tip for everyone. Make sure to like, subscribe, join the Discord below, and maybe put your video suggestions in the comments below. Thanks, hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Now we are moving on to mid-game tips. Now that you are mid-game, you are probably comfortable with your 1600 or 2500 gem character of choice and have a decent understanding of the game. My first tip for mid-game players would be to start grinding earlier dungeons to drop characters you don't have yet. Now while well, you might be thinking, well I could just buy them. Do not buy them, dropping them is much easier, and now you're probably thinking more about this tip, you might be wondering, well why would I need bad bottom of the barrel characters? And my answer, collection points. In this game, there's a feature where the more stuff you collect, the more buffs you will earn, which make you a lot stronger. Trust me, they help out a lot. Now my second tip, this can be done while grinding for characters, get yourself an accessory. An accessory can be found in almost any dungeon at the highest difficulty. This game has many accessories, and they all come in different rarities. The higher the rarity it is, the more substats it will have, and therefore the better it is. While lower dungeons have weaker accessories, it is a good idea to grind for them, as it will take less time than grinding for the accessory of your current dungeon. I would recommend grinding a dungeon you can finish in less than 2 minutes and 30 seconds for an accessory. If it takes longer, scale it down a little and go to the previous dungeon to see if you can do it a little bit quicker. My third tip for mid-game players is to begin doing speed raids. At this point in the game, you should also be working on your speed raids. You could technically start working on them early game, but I'd recommend you start working on them around mid-game, because by now you'll have more than enough characters to get some good milestone rewards if you do enough of them. My fourth tip for mid-game players, only upgrade the cards that are worth upgrading. Just like early game, do not bother with your substats yet, and just keep upgrading higher level cards. However, I do not recommend fully upgrading common and uncommon cards. Anything above that, however, for mid-game is fine. My fifth tip for mid-game players, begin doing your raids. Now that you're mid-game, I would recommend doing your raids, because you should be trying to get yourself a raid character as quick as possible, as they are some of the best characters in this game and can do insane amounts of damage. 
My sixth tip for mid-game players is to start doing your daily and weekly quests. Daily quests will give you 50 gems just for logging in, and 70 gems for every other quest. That Then when you finish all your quests, you earn 125 raid tokens, which means that this is a great way to stock up on tokens and gems each day, and I always recommend doing them. Weekly quests will also give a total of 600 gems a week and can be very useful to do. My seventh tip for mid-game players, save as many boss rush tokens as possible. Don't buy gold, don't buy accessories, because with these tokens you can get one of four characters, Kokushibo, Broly, Alice, or Gilgamesh. All of them are really good characters. Alright, now we are moving into my tips for endgame players. Endgame at the current moment, I would say starts at around level 100. My first tip for endgame players is to begin working on getting a Mythic Fruit. Mythic Fruit in this game are very good and have many useful effects. The Reaper Fruit, for example, will boost your attack when you use its ability. My second tip for endgame players, focus on your substats more from now on. Substats are extremely important and have a major role in your total damage per raid and how quick you can finish dungeons. There are five substats you want on your cards, critical chance, critical damage, attack, att cooldown reduction, and assist cooldown reduction. If possible, you should equip cards that have all five of these substats for the highest possible damage. My third tip for endgame players is to begin working on getting a mythic pet or celestial on a character. Both of these are very important but can take a very long time to attain. My fourth tip for endgame players is to do every raid, speed raid, and boss rush possible. Earlier it was fine if you skipped some, however now you want to do as many as possible, maximizing the raid tokens, boss rush tokens, and gems you'll get. All of these will be extremely important to you. My fifth tip for endgame players is to start buying every character you cannot drop from dungeons. After this, begin buying every costume. All of this will increase your collection bonus by a lot and giving you a lot more stat bonuses. My sixth tip is going to be to consistently grind for different raid characters. Once you drop a raid character, do not do that raid again. Instead, do a whole different raid to try going for another character entirely. The reason for this is collection bonuses. Trust me, those 2,000 collection points go a long way. My seventh and final tip is going to be, drumroll please, right here, to make sure to like, subscribe, and oh, oh crap, wait, no, I did this, I already did this earlier. You know what, uh, have a good day, I'll see you filthy animals in the next video.